Hey everybody, welcome back to Age of Empires Online. I'm Sakusaurus, and today eh, it's finally time to talk about the Age 4 advisors. But before I start, first things to say, I am gonna exclude advisor units just like I did with Silver Age. If you miss Silver Age, you can check it out here. And I'll be also excluding the legendary advisors because I think they deserve some special video about them. Like what do you think? So yeah, let's get started. And we're gonna start with the common ones for all the sims. So number one is the architect Tycho. Builders built in 50% less time and cost 50% less. Now before he work, I believe he was just the build time. The cost was for was on the King Thanos, who is now cheaper market in Bronze Age. So yeah, so definitely he's got upgraded, but still you will probably never pick him unless you're doing some kind of uh, quest that you where you are supposed to build the wonder within 20 minutes. There are some quests with that, but I don't know if you ever play those quests. Yeah, that's pretty much the only time. If you're just going, if you just will have to build a wonder, that's the only time. Otherwise, I just don't see him being useful at all. Uh, I I think this is like one of the least useful advisors in the game. But when you have to build a wonder, he can be a great choice. Okay, legendary one. Battlemaster Theocles. Infantry units have 10% more health. I like this this one. I think he's very useful and is definitely useful for the infantry saves, such as the Norse and Celts. You can definitely use him. But I think you can use him pretty much on any save where your main focus is the infantry, especially as a frontline. So it doesn't matter which save. I think he's very good. He can help you. He can help you with your infantry to stay alive, so you don't have to spend that many resources on spamming infantry. I think he's very useful. He's very good. I use him a lot when I want my tanky infantry. So when I'm playing as Greeks, definitely can be a good choice. Can be good with Persians. I don't, I don't think you will use him as Egyptian now with the new legendary advisor, but I think he's very good, very good choice. Okay, this is a Greek one. I'll keep the keep him for later. So let's move on to Darius. This is an advisor you can get from Skirmish. And what he does, guard towers can attack and see 30% farther. That's quite a lot of range. When you realize that the basic range of tower is like 30 units. Hang on, I think I should check this. Actually, if you take a look, guard tower, yeah, basic range is 30, so 30%. Literally 9 range. Just like that. So that's very huge. And also usually you can add some range through arrows, through bows, so that range can go a lot further. And all of a sudden your towers can have like over 50 range. So this, this advisor can be very use, useful, especially on defensive quests and the quests where you build only towers. You could use him during the Halloween event, during the... Don't let them balls on bottom, I think it was. So I think this can be a very good advisor. I don't use him that much because I'm not like heavy heavy on towers. I don't I'm not building that many towers and when I do I don't need that range. I already got like over 40 range, so why would I even go further right? <laughs> but yeah, he can be definitely useful. You can use him. I don't think he's that necessary to use and I think there are better choices. But he's great for your defense. Let's move on. Fourth, Lieutenant Xante. 
Fortresses have 50% more health and seek 100% farther. This is actually pretty good, like, Fortress is 50% more health? That's a lot of health. I can guarantee your Fortress can get like 15,000, maybe even 20,000, I don't know which Fortress you're using, which is safe. So you can get a lot of health out of this advisor, so definitely great choice for defensive players. And the line of sight, yeah, that's good, like... Fortresses have naturally high, high line of sight, so seeing one in person, yeah, you can see the enemy a lot sooner. It's definitely a good choice for defensive players. I don't use him that much because I don't think defense is that necessary during quest. You need to beat your enemy, not defend. So, defensive quests, I think this can be useful, otherwise, I don't really care. He's okay in my book. I used him a couple times. And I, I can tell he can be really good. Okay, advisor unit, legendary, two advisor units. Moving on to the King Agamemnon. This is also another one you can get in skirmish. And what he does, all military units have 4% more health and deal 4% more damage. Now, personally, I like this advisor. This is actually pretty good. And he definitely works well with sieves that use multiple types of units. So if you are playing, let's say, as Greeks, where you will, let's say, you build infantry for the front line, you go for ranged units, then you add some siege. He definitely is a great choice because he affects all of those units you train actually. So he definitely helps with your army. You do more damage, four percent. It seems little, but when you have a lot of units, it can become quite huge. And 4% health, same thing, it can become quite huge. I think he's very good, he can be very strong, I use him quite often. I think he's very useful. I think he's definitely up there for me. I think you can use him a lot, and it's easy to get him, just go play skirmish. You definitely like him if you're going for a mixture of units. If you're focusing, let's say, only on infantry, you're playing Celts, don't even bother with him. Just go like Theocles. But if you are going like Greeks with archers, infantry, siege, this is your advisor. Okay, again, Greek, Greek, Queen Boudica. All resources trickle in at a rate of 2 per second. So what does it mean? You actually get two resources of each, like you get two food, two wood, two gold, and two stone per second. Although I think it trickles every two seconds, so you actually get rather four every two seconds. So it's free resources, and eh, I used it a lot, quite a lot, before the servers shut down. And I must say, I, right now, I don't find her that useful, actually. First of all, you usually want to be the quest fast. And this advisor requires time to actually be useful. Because you want to spend as long time as possible to actually get those resources. I mean, she can add you a lot of resources, like 120 resources of each. That means a total of 480 per minute. That's not a small amount of resources, that's actually pretty nice. But yeah, once you have a lot of villagers, you just gather it. The problem I see with her is she comes so late. She comes in Bronze Age. Oh, sorry, Golden Age. It's just so late to actually be useful. And that's what bothers me with her. She comes too late. If she came sooner, I think she would be good. But because she comes in Golden Age, she comes in later, so you already had to spend some time to reach the Golden Age, so already you don't get the resources from that. And once you reach the Golden Age, then you start getting the resources, but at that time you have a lot of villagers, you have all your storehouse updates, you get just a lot of resources naturally. 
for gathering. So why do even bother with her? Then? I don't think she is that useful. She might be doing some quests. I don't know. I don't find her that useful. I think I would rather just buff units. Than rather picking her for my better economy. Like at that time, my economy is fully upgraded. I don't think she's that useful. If you like her, yeah, okay. I think she's better if you're like doing basic quests. You just started playing. If you get her, she can be good. But I don't. I don't think she's that useful. Okay. Savvy merchant Zeno or Zeno. Caravan straight for 20% more gold. Oh, this is actually very nice advisor. Like 20% more gold, that actually that can be useful, especially on quests where you, well, you cannot get good trade from caravan, so you're kind of limited on the distance. So let's say you can get like 50 gold with the up, you get the market up period of 60, and you still just need more gold. Yeah, this guy can be useful. Yeah, it's more so he helps you with your gold income late game definitely can be good but yeah most most of that work you just get from Dumnorix at bronze age you get the cheaper caravan so you get them early plus they are 10% faster so yeah you already get quite effective caravans from bronze age so this advice eh, kind of bad that he comes so late but he is strong, he is strong, I would not underestimate him. He can be useful if you are going for heavy gold units. Can be like, let's say you play, you're playing as Norse, you want to get the Berserkers, but you're kind of limited on gold, you don't have Biorex Legendary Advisor. Well, your only income is gonna be the gold from trade. This can be useful if you're limited on the, on the distance, so you cannot get the 150 gold already. Yeah, I think this is a good choice for that case, but, like I said, it's better to just upgrade your other units, or just straightforward upgrade the unit. Can be good, more of a situational advisor for me. Okay, let's move on. She, ship Engineer Trifon. Ships deal 20% more damage. So, water maps. Well, you, you could tell, this is pretty much the only water maps advisor for you. So, if you're going, if you're playing water quests, you build a lot of ships, this is your advisor. What else to say? Like, 20% more damage for your ships. That's huge. So yeah, just, I don't, I don't think I have to say anything. You, you're playing water maps, unless <laughs> there's something very unique about the water map. Like the islands are close or something like that. I don't think I would pick anyone else. Yeah, def definitely water maps pick. And the last one is Trajectory Specialist Timo. Palitrons, Stone Throwers, and Log Throwers can attack and see 35% farther. Now that, that's a lot of range actually. 35%. But, uh, that, that that's just huge, just just huge. And we can again, we can just take a look. If we take a look at the Palintonon, where are you? There, the basic range is 55. So you increase it by a third. Yeah, that's almost 20 range, right? And then you get additional 20% from the champion upgrade. So just the mo, just the upgrade. You get how much? You get like 66. And a third, so it's like, yeah, we get like a 88 range, about 88 range for Palintons, just with this advisor, no gear included. So even without gear, that's a huge range. And then you add the gear with the legendary that gives you over 20% maximum range, and all of a sudden you're over 100 range. So this can be huge. Definitely helps your Palintons to stay safe. Does not help them do more damage, but because they're safe, you can destroy the enemy buildings, especially production that is like 
somewhere at the back of the base and you just cannot reach it. Yeah, this is very good advisor, especially with all the range gear you can get on Panitron. This can be huge range. And all of a sudden Panitron, they are safe. You don't have to worry about the enemy anymore. You are ever reaching. You just defend the Panitron. They just do all the work. And that's it. Definitely is a strong advisor. But it's kind of boring. Like, picking Panitron is just bombard the bill and just from safe to yeah it's kinda of boring for me I don't know about you boring so yeah that that's the last common advisor so there's not that many actually common advisors for all the sis they are nice choices but there's not that many okay let's move on to the Civ specific ones starting with the Greeks since I'm already at my Greek town. And the first one is Bolt Carrier Seleucus. Ballistas deal 30% more damage. I personally, I like this advisor, especially when I'm going with Ballistas. <laughs> no doubt, Ballistas with this advisor, they become just much better. 30% more damage, that, that's just a lot. And don't forget to add the fact that Ballistas have quite a huge Damage radius, 30% so that can be quite a lot of damage. You have problem with the enemy infantry, enemy range units, there's just a lot of them. Well, get some ballistas, big celerucus, yep, you're gonna kill them quite fast. I like this guy, I like him a lot. Definitely I like him more, more than the legendary for ballistas. Oh. Uh, yeah, I'm looking at you right there. <laughs> I don't like you. So yeah, definitely Seleucus for me is great choice. I like him. He's definitely a great advisor. So if you're going for Ballistas, yeah, I think I think you can just pick him straight forward. I don't. I would not even bother with Agamemnon at that point. So yeah, let's move on. The Leather Worker Ptolemais. Toxotai and Gastrafetes have 30% more armor against infantry units. Now, personally, I actually quite often forget that this advisor even exists. <laughs> Honestly, like, why would I even want to pick him? Like, why? Yeah, I would be like, am I like afraid for my Toxotes, my Gastrafetes? That much that they will get hurt by the enemy infantry? Well, not really. Gastrophilus are literally counter to infantry. They do just huge amount of damage. And Toxotes, Toxotes would be more arguable. But then you have, right now you have the legendary advisor for the Toxotes. So I'm asking more, why him? Like, why him? Like, eh. thirty percent more armor against infantry. It just no. And only on those two units, don't forget, only on those two units that already counter infantry. That's a big nope for me, honestly. If if I'm worried about my ranged units, I just add some frontline. So infantry as Greeks, I have really great frontline units. Whether it's hot plates, whether it's hit pass pissed. I'm not worried about the enemy units that much. So for me this guy big nope. I think he's he belongs to one of the weakest. I think this is even worse for me than the architect, the Tycho, or whatever his name was. Hang on. Just again, again. Yeah, Tycho. Yeah, literally. If this guy got deleted all of a sudden, I would not even notice, personally. I would not even notice. I don't think he's that useful. I don't know if any of you have ever used him. If you did, like, and I'm asking why. Why not just add infantry, like Hippaspis, who literally is great against infantry. Yeah, personally, I don't like this guy. I think this is <laughs> the worst Golden Age advisor, at least in my book. Okay, let's move on to Leonidas. Hoplets regenerate 1.5 health every second and have 15% more health. 
Now before it was Hopeless would get only 10% max health and I think it would be like up to 40%, maybe 50, I don't remember exactly. It's net resist. So I think he got definitely buffed, because who cares about this net resist? <laughs> the golden age. So I'm glad he got buffed. So we can definitely compare him to Theocles. Then, so the thing is, he buffs your hopeless. So if you're picking Leonidas, you're definitely going for hopeless. And hopeless are quite tanky units already. So giving him 15% more health is already huge. It's already huge. Definitely great advisor for hopeless. The health regen. Yeah, I don't really care about the health region, like I said, with Higginers in Bronze Age and the others. I don't care about the health region. I, I think health region is quite bad. It's good when you're like studying, you're like playing from. You just started playing as the save. Yeah, health region can be useful because it's quite huge. And the units don't do that much damage. But once you start doing legendary quests, yeah, your units are just gonna die. So the why bother even with the health region? It's just not gonna kill. There are a few exceptions, obviously I see that can be health that can use health region. I don't think it's that good. And second argument my, or my argument why I would rather pick the Oculus is Theocles over Leonidas is Theocles affects all your infantry units. So I I can use Hippaspis as well. My spearman can become tougher to kill. So for me Yeah, if if I'm using only Hope Blitz, yes, Leonidas is obviously better. But if I'm using more of a mixture of units or mixture of infantry units, so let's say I have hoplites and I add some hippospis because the enemy trains a lot of infantry. Yeah, I would rather go with Theocles. I think Leonidas is very good, so it's more of a depending on the situation. I think he's good. And yeah, I think he's great. I think he's great. If you like him, you can definitely take him. So yeah, I, I, I think he is great, he's great. And now the last Greek Riding Instructor Solon. Epicans gain a 15% chance to deal a critical strike. Now he got actually buffed and before it was just 5% crit chance. And I already did my video about crit chance and the crit damage, so if you if you watched it then you know that the 5% would be just 5% damage for your hit pickings right now. So I think this guy definitely deserved a buff. He was just weak. Too weak. So now with a 15% chance, this is definitely a great choice. If you're going heavy on hit pickings, definitely a great choice. You can use him. But I'm gonna argue, I would rather pick the legendary advisor who gives health and movement speed. I think that's better because he affects all color units. I would go rather with him over Solon. But if you don't have him, I think Solon can be good. If you're going just heavily on Hippicans, only Hippicans, this is definitely a great choice. But if, if you are going rather a mixture, or even if you are just going hippicus, I think the legendary advisor for cavalry is better because not only that he gives 15% health, he also gives movement speed too. I think he does more. So Solon kind of becomes wor slightly worse choice for me, at least in my opinion. But I will, I think I would still pick him, it, even if. If I have the Legendary Advisor, sometimes just picking him for fun can be good. If you don't have the Legendary Advisor, this is your advisor for Calvary. I think he's good. If you like him, yeah, you can pick him. Okay, now let's move on to Egyptians. 
and the first one for the Egyptians is Hatshepsut Tusk Sharpener. Or elephants deal 10% more damage. So this is definitely for those of you who like elephants. And I think this is quite a pickable advisor. And probably the only one that if you're going for elephants, the only one that other choice is here, the Caprice Coin Curator. And I think I got a few arguments against the Curator. So first of all, the Curator changes the cost of elephants just to gold. So you need a lot of gold product, gold production, yeah. So that means a lot of caravans. And what are you supposed to do when you don't have the distance for the gold? So that's one thing. You might not have the distance to actually make the elephants with just the gold. And don't forget, the cost of one more elephant, the basic cost is 300 food and 75 gold. So all of a sudden changing the cost to 375 gold. Yeah, it's just a lot of gold. So you get ready, you, you're gonna need a lot of caravans. And to actually be able to maintain the production of the elephants you need quite a distance for the caravans or a quite a lot of caravans really unique. if you don't have the distance I think you don't even bother with, with Capri and rather go hot suits Let's give the, the tusks, Task Sharpener so for me Task Sharpener can be great choice I, I think it's a good choice. I would say more situational since Capri Curator does a lot more. So if you are having trouble getting the gold income, this is your advisor over Capri. Yeah. Next one is Sagheads Elephant Whisperer. Elephant archers cost 30% less gold and attack 30% faster. So this advisor actually got buffed before it was just a gold cost reduction. And the gold cost reduction is quite a lot actually. If I remember the elephant archers cost over 200 gold so saving like over 60 gold per elephant archer can be huge. But then I'm gonna again argue if you're losing elephant archers you're doing something wrong. And I don't think the gold income late game is that huge problem for a player. So for the gold cost is not that great. It's a lot of gold, but it's not gonna be that great. If you're losing elephant arches, you're doing something wrong, okay? So right now I would say the attack 30% faster is actually what matters. 30% attack damage per second. Thirty percent more damage per second is actually a lot for elephant arches. If I remember correctly, my elephant arches get easily 150 damage, so 30% more of that. Yeah, that's a lot of damage. They attack often, and don't forget, elephant arches also have splash damage, so that's a lot of damage you can get out of elephant arches. So I think this can be great choice if you're going for elephant archers. Yeah, this is your great choice. Just don't forget to protect them. You just uh, they will just not survive that well <laughs> without protection. I think great choice. And I believe yeah, that, that's the last one. So last Egyptian set the chariot builder. Chariot archers move 20% faster and can attack and see 20% harder. So again, this one also got buffed, before it was just the movement speed. The movement speed, yeah, eh, it's a joy to micro the chariot archers who get to train at the stables. So they already get additional movement speed from stable upgrades. This is, this can be huge. So if you're microing them properly, yeah, your chariot's gonna die that easily with this advisor. And then you add the range, so you keep them safer. And now with the movement speed and the range, 
Yeah, your chariot archers cannot die that easily. <laughs> so I think this is actually huge. It keeps your chariot archers safe, and chariot archers cost quite a lot of resources, like 80 wood and 80 gold for one of those. That's quite a lot. It's not that bad, however. And you're playing as Egyptian, so it's not that bad as it looks. But yeah, keeping them alive with this advisor, it's much easier. I think this is more of a defensive bonus for your chariot archers to keep them alive. But I think it's great. So that was the last Egyptian one. So let's move on to the Persians. So right now there's from now on it's gonna be like one advisor per save, so Persians have only one. So and it's Grandmaster Garhasp. Galafrags deal 20% more damage. I'm just gonna check it to make sure. Yeah, yeah, he's the only one. So yeah, Galafrags having 20% more damage. That's actually pretty huge, but Galafrags for me, at least for me, are quite expensive units. I mean, one of those just costs 100 food and 150 gold. 150 gold. So that's already quite a huge cost just for the Krafrak. And also they take three population, so yeah, they take a lot of space. And they are also the slowest cavalry unit I can think of. If I exclude one of the advisor units and just take the basic units, yeah, he's the Krafraks are the slowest cavalry unit. So for me yeah, it's a lot of damage. But is it worth is it worth on like the slowest unit? Slowest color unit? Eh. I mean yeah, Catafracts already do quite a lot of damage, but they are expensive, they take a lot of space. And at the end I cannot have that many at my disposal. So for me this is kinda bad just because I cannot get that many. And at the end Catafracts are not that strong. <laughs> but they are good against infantry, they are good against siege. Shame that to counter the siege they actually have to reach it. Oh boy, I, I don't like Gerafracts right now. So, Advisor is good, but if you are going for Gerafracts, I think... Personally, I think it's not even worth picking. Gerafracts are just not gonna be your your main go-to unit. They're strong, but you will not get many of those. You will not get many of those. And as a result, you will not get that much damage. In my opinion. But like I said, I'm not a Persian player. I said that in Civil Age Advisor video. I'm not a Persian player, so for those of you who play Persians mainly, you might have better experience than I do. I think it's a good advisor, but the unit itself is not that good, so at the end, the advisor is not gonna be that great. Okay, now the next thing the Norse. Okay, so the Norse have also only one King Teod. Berserkers deal damage. So if I compare this to the Garhasp, Garhasp gives 20% more damage to Garhasp. Stay forward. Straightforward, right? But like I said, Garafrags are quite expensive and they take a lot of space. So, Berserkers take less space, so for me, like 10% is okay. But they also have Splash, so 10% damage can be a lot more damage actually, just because they have the Splash. And it's actually a bigger Splash area than Celtic Champions, so. This can be quite a lot of damage all of a sudden. And if you played ever as no horse, I think you did get a lot of berserkers at some point. So yeah, this can be huge. The problem I see is well, berserkers cost a lot of gold, so it might be a little bit of problem to get the gold. And if you're using gauntlets on them, yeah. A lot of gold you're gonna need, so. Get ready to spend a lot of gold on Berserkers and then 
and you will not use Golden Age Advisor to actually help you with that. And as Norse, you have option as an option the Xeno Advisor to get more gold from Caravans or Biorix to get 30 gold per second, which is a lot of gold, obviously. So yeah, if you're going for this, you're planning to go for Berserkers, remember, you're gonna need a lot of gold, that means a lot of Caravans. I like this advisor, I think he's good. I think it's a good choice, Berserkers have a lot of damage, they have big splash area, so 10% more damage is gonna be huge. Just be careful with the gold cost. And now let's move on to the Babylonians. So Babylonians have General Zu, and what he does, Royal Guards are 40% more resistant to bonus damage and cost 20% less. So yeah, if you've ever played as Babylonians and tried to go for Royal Guards, you'll notice they cost quite a lot of resources actually. One Royal Guard costs... 55 food and 55 gold, so they are quite expensive. So if you wanna train a lot of them, yeah, you're gonna need a, quite a lot of caravans. You're gonna need also some farms and gardens. And since Babylonians have quite bad farms, because they get only the first farming upgrade, yeah, you, you're just gonna have to get the food from the gardens. And you're gonna still need a lot of farmers. But I, I like this advisor. I think he helps you with Royal Guards a lot, just because making them cheaper is very good. But also, you will not have to replace them that often. And Royal Guards already have quite a huge damage, naturally. So, giving them 40% resistance to bonus damage is great if you're trying. If you're fighting the anti-infantry units, so let's say they're you're fighting against some, um, I don't know, I'm gonna say like you're doing Battle of Opis, you're fighting the Lancers. This is gonna help. There are also some bowmen. This is gonna help. There, are, they also send the Royal Guards. Yes, this is gonna help. So for me, General Zoo is a great choice that situation so if like I said if I'm play, planning to go for lower guards this is my advisor definitely helps me to mask them the bonus damage protection is great at that situation so I can definitely see General Zoo being used to legendary quest but I think Babylonians are still more about the stables rather than infantry but you can definitely use use him. You can definitely go infantry units. And I think Royal Guards are one of the best infantry units in the game. Because they get quite huge damage, they get quite huge. What do I say? Eh. Nah, they're quite mediocre. The problem I see with Royal Guards is just the, the cost and they are not like super overpowered units. They have huge damage, but their health is not that great, honestly. So yeah, if you're planning Royal Guards, this can be good, but it's more of a situational for me. Like I said, for Babylonians, it's better to go into stable units. And there are some choices for that, so... Well, namely the Legendary Advisors. Yeah, so General Zoo, it's more of a situational when I plan to go for infantry, but otherwise I just suggest focusing on the stables. And now let's go to the last save, the Celts. So yeah, Celts get Celts are the last ones. So let's see. do it. Warlord, let's get Torix. Champions deal 15% more damage. Yeah, remember like I said, Berserkers. Berserkers get only 10% because huge splash. Yeah. I see a reason why champions get only 15%. <laughs> it makes sense that they get less than the Cataphracts in their splash and that they get more than Berserkers because they have small splash. So 15% is 
reasonable number to me. But personally, I don't think you will ever pick this advisor once you get Brenos. If you don't know, Brenos increases attack rate by 15%. So pretty much it should be pretty much equivalent to when you get Torix's 15% more damage, right? Because damage increases by 15%, right? So for me, when you get Torix is kinda bad. Because why would I even want to pick him if I get Brenos, right? Yeah, personally, I, I don't even see the reason. Like, the only reason I see is, like, the 15% more damage means, hey, that one attack that Champion does is stronger. But if I take a look at Brenos, they'll get... They'll attack 15% more... More... Ah, let's see. That the number of attacks is gonna be increased by 15%. Whereas with Enzigatorix, the damage of each attack is getting increased by 15%. So yeah, this is more of a burst, whereas Brenos is through throughout the time, dealing more or applying more hits. Yeah, that's it. So for me, Brenos is obvious choice, not only because more attacks, but also he he does more. He just also gives movement speed as well as snare resistance or immunity, straight immunity. So Vertigatorix, yeah, you don't you don't get to pick him once you get Brenos. So for me, it's useless advisor, but if you don't have Brenos, it can be good. Yeah, so if you don't have Brenos, this is your advisor. Once you get Brenos, this advisor does not exist for you. So yeah, that's the last advisor in Golden Age. Like I said, I'm excluding the legendary one. They deserve something, some sp more special video. And also, I don't have all of them, so I cannot even tell, tell you about those. And again, I excluded the... The advisor units, like I said in Silver Age, they are more of a situational rather than like must pick. So as you could see the Golden Age advisors are more about specific strategy. Like you are when you focus on infantry units, you can go to your police. You, if you are going specifically for one unit, let's say let's say, let's say champions, you can go with the Gatorics. And so on and so on. So they are more specific. You just need to make the choice. Like I said, there are some good, and then there are some really bad advisors. <laughs> I think there are some nice. So yeah, that's all for me for now. Also, I'm planning to make one more video. Hopefully, it will be done today. I'm still working on it. So, yeah, hopefully I'll be done today. So thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed this, press the like button. If you missed any previous, just check, check. There's a playlist. You can find all the advisor videos there. And if you want me to do something like this, talk about something, just ask in the comment section. Don't forget to subscribe for more, ring the bell. Yeah, this was Cycle Silence, and hopefully the next video will be done today. I'll see you it. So I'll see you there. So, later or tomorrow. Bye!